So please sit back and enjoy our opening song, May Nothing Evil Cross This Door, played by Sheila Kaloran. And the words are on your screen if you'd like to sing along. Like Westwood and many of us here today, Anne and I reside in Treaty 6 territory, which is also the homeland of the Métis Nation. Well, this is where many of the Treaty 6 nations now have a land base. Most of the nations now residing in Alberta and other nations far and wide claim this land as part of their traditional territory, dating back to a time when Indigenous people were free to travel across this great expanse of of our nation and beyond. We invite you to reflect on the history of your location, the people who first resided there, and the complex relationships that have occurred throughout history. May we all grow in understanding of the true histories of our locations and the Indigenous peoples of these lands, and may we all work to be responsible allies and partners in stewardship of the land. You are invited to situate yourself in this context by typing into the chat now. I would like to welcome everyone here this morning and say how happy we are to have you with us. A special welcome to newcomers. We hope you enjoy the service and invite you to stay afterwards to get acquainted. You can stay in the main Zoom room to chat with Anne or join a breakout room to connect in a smaller group. We welcome you, whatever your heritage, whatever your faith, whomever you love, and wherever you may be this morning. My name is Lori Crozier, and I am your service leader for today's service. I would like to take a moment to give thanks to all of the wonderful people whose combined efforts have made this service possible. Our musicians, Sheila Kaloran and Rebecca Patterson, our tech wizards, Ilara Stefania Gadet and Bill Lee, the worship team and the music advisory group, our administrator, Elaine, our speaker, Rev Ann, and for all the other elves working in the background. So if you have a chalice or a candle, you may want to grab that and bring it forward now. Our chalice lighting uh, poem to begin this morning is by the Reverend Lynn Unger and entitled Choice. There isn't a right answer. There just isn't. The game show where the bells ring and the points go up and the confetti falls because you got the right answer is a lie. 
The preacher who would assure you of how to attain salvation is making it all up. The doctor who knows just how to fix what ails you will be sure of something else tomorrow. Every choice will wound someone, heal someone, build a wall, and open a conversation. Things will always happen that you can't foresee, but you have to choose. It's all we have, that little rudder that we employ in the midst of all the eddies and rapids, the current that pulls us inexorably toward the sea. The fact that you are swept along by the river is no excuse. Watch where you are going. Lean in toward what you love. And when in doubt, tell the truth. We light our chalices this morning, not for the one right answer, nor for any single supreme truth, but for the courage to ask over and over again, what good shall I do today? At this time in our service, we pause to reflect on our week. We recall the milestones, the joys, the concerns and sorrows, the changes in our lives, those who need our healing thoughts. Community is deepened by sharing with, with each other what is in our hearts. I invite you now to share your concern or celebration in the chat or light your own candle in silence while we listen to box prelude number one played by Sheila. I would light one final candle for all the joys and concerns that remain in our heart. Please join me now in the affirmation. May the light of these candles inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope. Westwood Unitarian Congregation is a self-governing and self-supporting congregation. We rely on donations to support our staff and the important work that they do, as well as our various programs. The tradition of passing a collection plate around on Sundays is not avail available to us now, but imagine me passing the plate to you now. 
I invite you to give generously in order to contribute to the shared abundance of this community. As you will see on the screen, Interact donations are gratefully received at info at westwoodunitarian.ca, or you can go to westwoodunitarian.ca for more ways to donate. Please join Rebecca in singing our offertory song. From you I receive, to you I give. And now it is my honor and privilege to introduce our speaker, my missus and the minister to this congregation, Reverend Ann Barker. Thanks, Lori. What good shall I do today? This has been in our lives and in our shared ministry, one of the hardest times imaginable to be divided, to lose so much of our in-person face-to-face connection, our physical touch, the freedom to make live music together, all at a time when the world is wrapped in heartache and despair, when we need each other the most. We have rallied our best guesses, our gifts and all of our tools to respond as best we can. And we are flawed, strong and vulnerable. It's hard to sustain the energy it takes to make meaning in a pressure cooker. And we're sometimes less than brilliant, sometimes not our best selves, and sometimes messy. One gift of this heartbreaking time in my life and in this congregation is that simple phrase that has also become a spiritual practice, compassionate imperfection. We cannot know or do it all. We're doing our best, and we need to give ourselves the space to not be perfect, to do our best without needing to be perfect, to make the effort without demanding that it always be successful. Compassionate imperfection. And the thing that makes it work is the spirit of covenant, to trust one another and have clear boundaries, to be held within our community promises. As people of covenant, people who gather because we choose to be together out of meaningful intention and commitments, rather than people who gather as the result of some religious rule, we work to remind ourselves that we are messy, that we are imperfect, and that we don't know all the answers. And we work to remember that we are principled that we have created a container with the intent of respect for all people, which requires courageous boundaries to create and to sustain. What good shall I do today? We have been alerted and then reminded over the course of multiple generations that we sometimes fall short. We've been asked to affirm the eighth principle, both because we are imperfect and because we believe in boundaries, because we believe in commitments. An eighth principle would bind us together at a starting place. And it's hard to hear this, to realize that many of our BIPOC folks, while they see our intentions, they still experience our impacts as barriers, and that for them, the eighth principle is just a start. And this has led to difficult conversations, sometimes painful, sometimes frustrating or disappointing, sometimes inspiring or courageous, sometimes all of those things at once. And each of us experiences them differently because our individual lives and our individual boundaries sit at different places on the spectrums of investment, of personal experience and of loss. I don't know any of us who like difficult conversations, but I love that we're willing to enter into them because the alternative is that we water down our values until they are powerless 
that we avoid the discomfort, but then lose our strength. What good shall I do this day? The Westwood voted last Sunday to direct our delegates to vote yes to the eighth principle at the Canadian Unitarian Council national meeting this month. And I suspect the motion will probably pass on November 27th, but we don't know this for sure. We don't know anything for sure. One thing we can be fairly certain of, however, is that much like Westwood's conversations on the eighth principle, that national conversation will be painful and courageous and a celebration and in some ways, an experience of loss. These are the words of the Reverend Orlando Brunola as we move. As we move through life, finding ourselves always newly wise and newly foolish, we ask that our mistakes be small and not hurtful. We ask that as we gain experience, we do not forget our innocence, for they are both part of the whole. In our time together this Sunday, I invite you into the spirit of compassionate imperfection. Within the framework of our principles and our covenants, we remember who we are and what has drawn us to this life of service, this community of faith and hope. Within the frailty of our humanity, we ask that our mistakes be small and not hurtful. And we trust that our friends and neighbors and colleagues in this faith will hold us and redirect us as may be needed. Compassionate imperfection. Doing our best in caring space. As we go forward, it becomes our shared task to seek out the stories and ideas that illustrate the challenges, and more importantly, the value of positive culture change. Like Reverend Lynn Unger said in that opening chalice lighting poem, the preacher who would assure you of how to attain salvation is making it all up. I'm taking baby steps here learning at the speed of the opportunities around us, and we will all make plenty of mistakes. But that shouldn't stop us from taking chances or from learning and growing together. What good shall I do this day? Here are some of my most recent lessons. I'm trying to learn from our Indigenous elders and from our BIPOC siblings in faith and those who have left our faith, from all of our people with marginalized and intersectional identities. And I'm coming to understand just how many of them straddle our porous boundaries. Boundaries that are made weak by generations of not listening, made weak by our resistance to hear even when we enter listening spaces. As a faith tradition, we have been somewhat ignorant of the suffering experienced by the marginalized and racialized people among us. It wasn't a secret, but it also wasn't wildly, widely engaged. And it's natural that we feel protective when we get challenged. We love our congregations. We've worked hard to create nurturing, compassionate spaces, and we're tired. We're tired of the pandemic and being separated and always needing to figure out new solutions to challenging situations. It's really difficult to learn that for some people, our efforts to be inclusive have had the opposite effect. From our place at the center of the circle, we are not fully understanding how hard it is for marginalized people to enter. From our place at the center of the circle, we are unaware of how our beautiful words and meaningful works are not successfully reaching the margins. From our place at the center of the circle, we don't realize how many BIPOC folks are leaning out rather than leaning in. We may feel disappointed as we learn this, but we can also get curious. What good shall we do this day? The story of how you use answer the call for an eighth principle is being written right now. 
not just how we vote, but how we bring it to life. What do you want the story to say? How do you want this moment to be remembered? What do you want your part in the story to be? While we are celebrating with congregations who plan to vote yes on November 27th, there are also congregations who are voting no, some through intent and some just through lack of engagement. And while we can breathe a sigh of relief here, a reprieve from the tension of the conversation because our Westwood vote has been completed, BIPOC members remind us that they don't get to rest, that it is never entirely okay. And that the pressures of these congregate of these conversations weigh heavily on their backs. A black leader in our faith just days ago said that on November 27th, I'll finally learn where I stand with Canadian Unitarians. And a young person of color explained that they were so hopeful discovering UUs in Canada because our words align with their values in life, but that they only barely have one foot in the door because it all feels so fragile right now. That we can say we believe in the inherent worth and dignity of all people and at the same time argue whether their experiences are valid. Our national leaders in anti-racism and anti-oppression doing the work that our congregations have asked them to do have been insulted and bullied along the way. And they're weary and still they continue. When asked, they remind us that the work is the work because regardless of the results of the vote, the work continues. In fact, the greatest failure would be for the vote to go yes and the work to be abandoned if we choose to rest rather than stretch into the work. What good shall we do this day? We can help one another remember that someone with one foot tenuously in and one foot still on the outside is not actually in yet that our ways of being, if they focus more on the comfortable and the familiar than they do on marginalized people's pain, might actually be barriers and not boundaries. Boundaries are meant, like our opening song, which is one of my favorites, said, to keep hate out and hold love in. Barriers limit who is allowed to enter. We can do better. The work is the work. It will always be the work. It was the work when Martin Luther King sat in the Birmingham jail. It was the work when Trayvon Martin and George Floyd were killed. It remains the work when unmarked graves of Indigenous children are identified, when Muslim women are attacked in shopping mall parking lots, when the queer community devalues the experience of BIPOC members, especially those at the intersection of trans and racialized identities. Whether the eighth principle vote passes or not, the work is the work for each of us. And if we read our principles with this lens, if we read our covenants, with this lens, if we examine our purposes and our practices with this cracked and fragile lens, we will all be transformed, all of us, especially those of us who are white, especially those of us who do not have the daily experience of not being seen. I have confidence in us as people, as potential, and as a faith tradition. I really, truly do. That as we open ourselves and our congregations up, we will learn how to support and fully partner with the BIPOC people in our midst. We are invited into new and deeper relationships, but it is not a certainty. We have the power to make positive change. I hope that we are ready to share it. What good shall we do this day?
Now to close, I'm going to give the last five minutes to a video. It's a rewrite of a Billy Joel song that captures in tender ways some of the essential beautiful truths of congregational life. I hope as you watch and listen that you will receive it in the spirit that it is offered, the spirit of love for all the gifts of congregational life and that we all ponder at our deepest level the opportunities before us. We are writing the story now that our religious ancestors will tell. What do you want it to say? Blessed be and amen. It's 10.25 on a Sunday The regular crowd shuffles in There are two kids lightsaber battling With rolled up church bulletins And the mom says, speak us some story That will sit these two down in their chairs Cause although I'm not gonna, there are times when I wanna just push both my kids down the stairs. La 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 di da da. La 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 di da da da. Speak us some words, you're the preacher man. Tell us a story or two Please let something you speak Get us through this long week Cause we're sort of coming unglued Now the choir director's a friend of mine for she was before we had a choir. Now she's drunk with the power and a delicate flower. In my dreams at night, she's lit on fire. Except I know she's losing her eyesight, and that might mean losing her store. Though it's kind of a mess, I can't care about desk hands. Cause I know what we're really here for. La 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 di da da. La da da di da da da. Now Paul's an armchair sociologist who knows just how the world should be run. And he's talking with Franny, who rages with grannies, and who rarely hears from her son. And everyone's practicing politics. The wrong words might just get you stoned. Yes, we're sharing a drink we call powerlessness, and every pew is a throne. Preacher man, tell us a story or two. Please let something you speak get us through this long week, cause we're sort of coming unglued. It's a pretty good crowd for a Sunday. There's some folks I've not seen in a while. Well, we're lonely and fried. But we're still side by side, and I can't 
suppress a big smile. And the piano, it sounds just like childhood. And the lobby, it smells of warm brew. Though we drink from cracked cups, we are still showing up. And there's nothing that I'd rather do. Oh, la la, la la, la di da da. La la, la di da da da. Speak us some words, you're the preacher man. Tell us a story or two. Please let something you speak get us through. Long week, cause we're sort of coming unglued. So let me just lift up that, um, I mean, you know, it's a Billy Joel song. Liz James wrote the words and Scott Farrell is a music director in one of our UU congregations in the States. And he's also a voice teacher, a private voice teacher. If you want to see that video again or share it with someone you love, we'll put it up on Westwood's Facebook page today. But if you're not on Facebook, you can access it through YouTube. And if you search Mirth and Dignity, it's on the Mirth and Dignity page. That's the parent of the UU Hysterical Society. And all the credits are at the end, which tell you how to contact Scott. If you want to learn how to articulate in that way that he does, that you can get all the words. I thought it was just a beautiful piece of work. I wanted to start the sermon with it, but it makes me cry every time I watch it. And I thought, nope, I need a minute to gather myself before I try to say something. We are writing the story now that our religious ancestors will tell. What do you want it to say? You want to bring your candles or your chalice forward? Our closing poem by the Reverend Lynn Unger is entitled The Way It Is. One morning you might wake up to realize that the knot in your stomach has loosened itself and slipped away and that the pit of unfulfilled longing in your heart has gradually, and without you really noticing, been filled in, patched like a pothole, not quite the same as it was, but good enough. And in that moment, it might occur to you that your life, though not the way you planned it, and maybe not even entirely the way you wanted it, is nonetheless persistently, abundantly, miraculously, exactly the way it is. What good shall we do this day? Blessed be and amen. Our closing song is number 318, We Would Be One, played by Sheila.
That's one of my favorite songs and definitely one of my favorite tunes in the hymnal. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, it's visiting time, but before we do that, I just want to bring to your attention that we have a wonderful guest speaker next week. Um, Nicole Mackay is studying to be Canada's first Unitarian Universalist uh, military chaplain. And she is going to be our guest speaker for the service next week. I'm really excited to hear what Nicole has to say. She is a lovely human and I trust that you will enjoy her. I know, I'm just so excited about that.